for the Vikings. Counties with the white jerseys, the red pants to the left of your screen. Rogers also wearing red and white. They'll have the dock jerseys. And Roach's kick is a long one. Deep, gets behind the Rogers defender. That's a loose football. Still loose, looks like he's Providence as we covered. Ronnie Thomas jumps on the loose football. And a big break for East Providence as senior number 40, Ronnie Thomas, all the way down the field and jumped on the ball as the Rogers defenders looked a bit confused. That's a live football once he gets past 10 yards. And Thomas said, you guys don't want it, I'll take it. And East Providence will have first and 10 from what looks like inside the Rogers 10 yard line. Let's put the ball actually on the four. First and goal. Hamill takes the snap from Rosa. Rankin, the ball carrier. Gets close, that's Leanne Rankin, Leandro. Here's number 38, he's a junior fullback. It'll be a second and goal. So right off the bat on the opening kickoff, Townie's looking to score as Ronnie Thomas pounced on that ball on the four yard line after he got behind the Rogers special team players. And a penalty, it looks like an illegal procedure. Uh, someone lining off out, offside will push back the townies five yards. This particular refereeing crew may pose some problems for the townies. At least one official out there that some of the townie fans are a little leery of. We'll see how that goes. Again, a flag. And it looks like Another procedural call. We, we can't really spot anybody blatantly offsides. <laughs> County coaching staff perplexed. They don't really notice a major problem. They're asking the officials what and who. So after being on the floor, counties are pushed back. Somewhere around the 14 yard line. Still second in goal. Amro pitches to Andre Nemhard, who scampers towards the end zone. He's in, touchdown. <laughs> Nemhard, number 27, took the pitch from Amro and scored on a 13 yard run. East Providence six, Rogers nothing. Early in the game, opening minutes. Townies kicked off to Rogers. Ray couldn't pick up the ball. East Providence jumped on it on the four yard line, Ronnie Thomas. And the Townies quickly lead, six nothing. Emro, again the pitch to Nemhard. And Nemhard is stopped short, or is he in? He's in, but there are penalty flags on the play. So Nemhard conversion attempt is going to be negated and a clip call. We only see a clipping call on a two yard plunge into the into the end zone. as the fans are already buzzing in the crowd about some of the early officiating here. So the two point conversion is negated. And the counties will try again. Rankin, Kelly, Nimhod in the backfield. Amos to throw. Now he's going to put it away and run. 
Hamler brought down short of the goal line and the conversion is no good. So East Providence scores first and leads Rogers six nothing. Coach Gorham telling his team three penalties this early is not what he expects. But the Townies have the early lead and Rocha will again kick off and again Calhoun deep for the Vikings. Justin Rocha just looking better and better every week. All aspects of his game. Kicks away another. Good one that'll be hard to return. At the 21 yard line. David Lockhart has the ball and Rogers will go. First and 10 from their own 21. Tony's defense has played just great all season. Early on in the preseason, coaches thought that they might be a little suspect, but they've answered the bell. Greg Fader is a senior captain quarterback. Going nowhere as Evans and Oliver. And it looks like also Brian Martins in on the stop. So if Brian Emerald is the spiritual and athletic leader of this team, he also helps out on defense. The pitch. Look out here, as that's number 45. Jason Tetzloff is a senior. Good for the first down for Rogers. Rogers beyond their own 35 now. Fader takes the snap. Steve Evans in first on the tackle. Jay Oliver looks like a flag on the play. Motion call against the Vikings. County coaching staff saying take the penalty. Helping out head coach John Sandy Gorham, uh, John Stringfellow, Jay Montero, Steve Ciaccarella. Fader back to pass. Just overthrows Dennis Calhoun. Townies in the good coverage. Todd Hill, Ray Smith, Nemhard all in the area. Third down play. Fader, back to pass, looking for Calhoun. Broken up by Brian Amrill. Amrill deflected that pass away. Nice looking pass. Fader looking for Calhoun, but Amrill was there to stop it. And it will be a fourth down. <laughs> Fader will be doing the punting. Hit high, but he gets it off. Nice rush put on by the Townies. And that's Nimhard who brings the ball back, downing it for East Providence, who will take over first and 10, leading 6-0 over Rogers. We are early in the first quarter. <laughs> 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 K 
counties spread out. Lee Rankin goes ahead for a couple. Second and about eight for East Providence. Rocha, wide receiver to the near side. Lincoln in motion. Ammo slips down. No gain, maybe a slight loss. It's been raining a good part of the afternoon and not a very thick grass here at Topa Field in Newport. Maybe a bit slick. Again, Rocha to the near side. <laughs> Hamill, back to pass. Looking for Rocha. There's a bomb, Rocha's there, but oh, it's just overthrown. That's the combination that defeated Portsmouth at the buzzer, if you will. If you saw that exciting game last week, Emerald to Rocher with a 40-yard touchdown bomb, winning the game with 40 seconds left. But Rogers holds, and the townies Joe Wall into punt. Wall gets a nice punt away, nice high punt. Takes a bit of a Rogers bounce, however. And number two, Keith Widow. Stops it from bounding any further in the Vikings' favor, and Rodgers will take over again, first and 10. Six nothing, East Providence leads. <laughs> Tripped up by Jay Oliver, is Dennis Calhoun. Calhoun picks up five yards on the play. Second and five from about 39. Quick pitch is good to Gendron. Who was run out of bounds by the townies Ray Smith. And not before Gendron picks up a Viking first down. Caught in the backfield. That's the townies number 73, Brian Martins. So a loss of a yard in that play, it'll be a second and 11. Brian Martins, such a key player for East Providence in what is a very well-balanced ball club, defensively, offensively. Beto, that's Jason Tetzeloff breaking through the townies defense. One man left. And Ray Smith catches up with Tetzloff for the touchdown saving tackle. First and 10 inside the townies 30. Tetzloff run was good for 32 yards. And if it wasn't for Ray Smith, that had touchdown written all over it. So the county's defense, after looking good initially, being tested now. Calhoun gets the ball inside the 19 yard line for Rogers. Jay Oliver, 
Tony Band on the road, back on the road again. You may have been following that story, the saga of the budget plight. They're here today in Newport. Fader, the option. Once again, that's Jason Tetzloff. He's a senior. Ray Smith, the speedster from the Towny track team, catching up with Tetzloff. the Vikings on the march against the Townies. Caught by Steve Evans. No gain on the play. Helped out also by Jay Oliver. As Tetzloff stopped that time. Stevie Evans, key senior lineman for these townies. And Rogers wants a timeout. They're knocking on the door against the favorite townies and they want to make sure that they get the play right. There's Brian Martin, Charlie Bev Hassel in the crowd. Like we said, they come to just about every town game, every sport. All the homes and many away. Football, I think they get on the road to just about every game. <laughs> so again, Greg, Greg Fader will bring his Vikings to the line. The pitch back to Tetzloff. Tetzloff getting it closer and closer on every play. Vikings have a first and goal from the Townies five yard line. And again it's Tetzloff who is in for the Rodgers touchdown. Rogers scoring on a nine play, 67 yard drive. Jason Tetzeloff scoring the five yard touchdown run. It's now 6-6 six, six with just under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Vikings looking to go ahead, attempt the two point conversion. Later, the pitch back, it's over Tetzel's head. Sluice the Townies cover and it will be an East Providence ball. So Tetzloff, the workhorse here early for the Vikings, but not that time as he couldn't get the pitch. And head coach Sandy Gorham addressing East Providence Townies. I'm sure he wants them to step up the intensity. This is a game in which East Providence is expected to win rather easily. But when you're in the championship division or Class A or whatever they're calling it this year, Division I football, which represents the best of the state, every game is a good one. And everybody's after these Townies this year, as well as Hendrick and Hawks. Squid kick goes out of bounds. So Rogers will be kicking again. Also helping out with the townies, Roger Farmer. John Vita. And referee Ray Brown explains to Captain Brian Ammo what will ensue here. We told you the first game of the season that we thought Brian Ammo 
He's the best quarterback in the state. And not only do we still say that, but we tell you that we think he's the best all-around football player. And we're starting to hear that from opposing coaches and opposing teams as well. So another kick. This one stays inbounds. Lincoln fumbles the ball. Rogers, it appears, has recovered it. And the Vikings, with the big break, recover the fumble on the kickoff with excellent field position. And indeed, as many fear, it looks like the Townies may have come out a bit flat after easy opening victories over tough opponents, North Kingstown, Portsmouth High. Now it's the rest of the league that you have to watch out for. And Vikings right back on offense inside the Townie 40. Fader, the quick pitch, incomplete. Townie's defense will be put to a big test early in this half. This Providence has come up big all year on defense. Doing just a great job. Second down inside the Townie 40. Calhoun ahead for a few. He's put down by Jay Oliver and Brandon Waters. Harry Petal, 33. Not able to really play on offense. Slight injury, but he's out there on defense. Counties are rich in running backs. One liability is their size, not an overly big team. Big rush put on by Brian Amrill. Along with Gabe Gonzalez and Fuder. Unable to make the pass and credit that to Amaral and Gonzalez who put the rush and the hit on the Rogers quarterback. Brings up a fourth down to the Townies. Hold and Rogers will be punting here. Well inside his province territory, so they should pin the townies back fairly deep. So Andre Nemhard brings the ball back a few yards. Not a lot of running room there to get great field position. And this Providence will take over first and ten. It's very difficult to see the downs markers from my position here, but it looks like they're at least well within the 25 yard line or the 20. Andre Nemhard on the carry, brought down by number 42, Evan Wild. Nemhard, the ball carrier, as Ray Smith brings in the play from Coach Stringfellow. Hamill surveys the defense, the call. But just to Ray Smith, the speedster who can't get loose. And it looks like it'll be about a third and nine for his Providence. At about the 21 or 22 yard line. Penalty on the play. going against East Providence. So East Providence unable to get untracked here early in the game. That's a holding call. That'll back them up. So the ball is at the 10 yard line. It'll be a second and about 15. 
Amro looking to pass. Has Rocher open, doesn't see him. The throw intercepted. Evan Weibel with the interception as Brian Amro can't believe he did that. Had Justin Rocher, didn't see him. Pretty good protection initially, and then the pressure just came in from Rodgers and the interception by Vikings, the Vikings Weibel. And once again, Rodgers with tremendous field position inside the Towney 20. We are tied at six. In first quarter, and what looks like is going to be a very tough, tough game. Tetzloff stopped by Oliver and Evans. Jay Oliver, sophomore, number 44. We'll be hearing and seeing from him over these next three years at EP High. Rogers looking to take the lead. Will Smith with the tackle. So as the first quarter ends, the ball is spotted at about the five yard line where the Vikings will start the second quarter tied with East Providence at six. Tony Chile is in band uh, far to our right at the end of the stadium. We're unable to get many shots, if any, of the great Towny band. We'll talk about them a little later on during the game. As some donors have come forward throughout the community, showing some Towny pride, and have provided some funding to send the band on the road again. <laughs> Beta looking to pass. Incomplete. Flags on the play. County coaches seem to be very confident that it is against the Vikings. It is. So that'll help out. <laughs> Officials still conferring, but it appears it's an eligible field, player downfield. Downey coaches anxiously telling the players to take the penalty and push that ball away from the end zone. County coaches have done just a great job. They discuss things together. They have a lot of team meetings. They show a lot of calm and poise on the field. Not overreacting, not listening to the, let's say, suggestions from some in the crowd. And so far, they have an undefeated season. Bader, again going to the air. And broken up by Andre Nemhard. Almost picked it off. So 
for the Vikings. They had a lot of opportunities early in this first half, but still just tied with these Providence. Time out as Jay Montero out to talk to the Tiny defense. Rogers head coach is Jimmy Grower. Assistant coaches Richard Fulton, Keith McDonald, and Charlie Holder. The wishbone. Great pressure by Stevie Evans. Stevie Evans helped out by, I think it was Gabe Gonzalez. And the town, he's come up big. Looks like a, another penalty flag, however. And a face mask being called on that play. I tell you, I didn't really see that, and I'm looking through the camera lens, zooming in on that play, and didn't see that at all. Coaches, many in the stands. Can't really believe it. Looked like what I saw, that he, he kind of brushed over the top of his helmet, never coming close to the area in, in which you would be called for a face mask. And so even though the Tommies have been coming through big on defense, penalties are hurting. Rogers gets another light. Beta, back to pass, being chased by Rocher and Evans and it's incomplete. Big pressure put on by Stevie Evans and Justin Rocha made that possible. And so the Vikings now will lose possession of the ball. Townies pinned deep against their goal line as they seem to have been most of the, the night so far as Bobby Fatoma is still on his feet. Finally brought down, Fatoma has been injured all season long. Saw some limited action against Portsmouth. Played well. Coach Gorham said he's just about 100%, not quite, but Good enough to play. For Toma, the backfield, he was number nine. The pitch to Andre Nemhide. Nemhide with good speed, but can't get around the corner, and Andre is down and hurting. And we'll have an injury timeout. Andre Nimhod being attended to. His captain, Brian Emerald there, checking on him. Emerald looking concerned as Andre appears to be holding his arm or his wrist area. So it may be that left forearm is Dean McElwain, the townie trainer with him. Oh, 
Mounties will go again. Their backs pinned against their own goal line. Nimhart injured out of the lineup. They have Fatoma in the backfield. Just waiting as Nemhart is still walking off the field and we're set. Looks like maybe Ray Smith also in the backfield as Ambrose fumbles the ball and it looks like Rogers has recovered just about at the goal line. So these undefeated townies slow to untrack tonight. I don't think Brian ever had great control of that ball. Lost it, and the Vikings pounced on it. First and goal from the county two-yard line, and Fader in for the score on the quarterback sneak. Rogers takes the lead, 12-6 over East Providence. So in a stunning first half, East Providence trails Rogers 12-6, the Vikings. Playing well, but more of a case of the townies not playing that well. A two point conversion it is incomplete. There to break it up was Christian Andrade for East Providence, the junior. Well, there's just too much talent on this townie football team, and you, you gotta feel like you know, they're gonna crawl back into this game. This is a good group of players. All the coaches agree, just a great chemistry. There's Ronnie Thomas. Back deep along with Ray Smith. Got a little less than 10 minutes to go. Nine minutes and change in the first half. Keith Brito, number two, with a nice return for East Providence. Brito is a big sophomore. We'll be seeing and hearing a lot from him, too, over the next three years. Also can play basketball. Good athlete. Number two, Keith Brito. Who's Providence now on offense again at the 45-yard line? The first and 10 will try something. The wishbone. Well, whatever they're trying there didn't work as Amos sacked for a loss on the play. Amos now upset, showing some fire with his teammates as Android and Mike Kelly shuttle in the calls from Coach John Stringfellow. get the feeling that if the townies are going to wake up, uh, Brian Amel is going to have to deliver the wake-up call. That's Mike Lincoln with the first down run across the 45-yard line of Rogers. Amel, the leader of this team in all ways, and yet this is anything but a one-man Team by far as we wait and see for the official measurement, but it is a first down. A very, very well balanced football team. Deep on offense, playing very well on defense, special teams. What they do lack is size, especially when they're Henrik and looming out there with an average size uh, on the line of over 240 pounds. Again, it's Lincoln. Mike Lincoln, the senior running back. Two 
big gainers in a row. Townies, no huddle. Come right back to the line. Toma Smith in the backfield. And it's Mike Lincoln, same call again and another good four to five yards. So Townies on the move. They're trailing 12-6. Another East Providence first down and another no huddle offense for Gorham's Townies. And guess who? Mike Lincoln. Not quite as large a gain that time. But Townie's now just taking it straight ahead and going right at the heart of the Vikings line. In the 66, the center is Carlos Rosa. 76 is big Mike Grabari. Equipment problem with Chris Mello. He'll have to come out of the lineup for a play. Tony's inside the 20 approximately. It's a second and seven. Hamilton for Thomas breaking through the middle. Bobby for Thomas still going. Ball is loose, fumble, Rogers recovers the fumble. Well, once again, East Providence on the move for Toma. Breaking towards the end zone. Just not covering up that football as well as he should. As Coach Gorham letting him know. And guess what? Vikings back on offense from about their own four-yard line. East Providence squandering a golden opportunity to tie this game up and maybe go ahead. Flags on the play. This one appears to be against the Vikings. 12-6. Rogers with the surprise early lead in this game, but a long way to go yet. A lot of football to play. These townies very capable of bouncing back. Brian Ammo with the slamming tackle. Second down and 15. Oliver and company in the area. Still in the first half. Townies coming out a bit flat. I guess it, it's an understatement. But the defense has been brilliant at times. Two yard gain, that was Gabe Gonzalez and Kyle Price in on the tackle. Third down play for the Vikes. Their senior captain, number 14, Greg Fado, at quarterback. Fado, the pass, lost a long one, and it's picked off by Justin Rocher. Rocher over the 10, runs out of bounds at about the six yard line. And the stop was made by the quarterback, Fader, who had he missed Rocha, Townies may have scored. Rocha gets the ball inside the 10-yard line, picking off another interception. He's had a 
couple or a few this year. And the townies now quickly will look to tie this game up and maybe go ahead before the half. Amro. Mike Lincoln on the carry. Stop by Tim Bristol. Lincoln was the ball carrier. Second and goal. Ammo has Smith. And Lincoln in the backfield and timeout is called. So a good timeout by the townies. We want to Keep an eye on the clock and talk about the best possible play. As you can see, five minutes to go in the half. Plenty of time, and they really need a touchdown here. Got to get back into this game and get the crowd back into it. More importantly, get themselves back into it. Hamble, the quarterback sneak. He's close. And he's in. Touchdown, Brian Amro. Townies tie it up with another touchdown by the senior captain quarterback, Amro. He's 4-0 overall, 3-0 in this top division. East Providence going for the two-point conversion. Rankin is stopped. So the score remains 12-12. And again, the Townies will kick off. Very strange game tonight. East Providence at times showing flashes of what has made them undefeated so far this season. And at other times, not playing well at all. But that's gonna happen with any good football team. And a lot of young kids on this team still learning, still gaining in experience. And I think they'll be there when it's needed. This is Dennis Calhoun with a nice run back, getting the ball close to the 30. Ball may have been loose, but the Vikings have it. So it will be a first and 10 from about the 27, close to the 30. Four minute warning has been issued. And we are tied at 12. This is Bob Roderick's for TSN, Towny Sports Network, on the road tonight at Rogers Topa Field in Newport. Bringing you all the action. Another good run by David Lockhart this time, brought down by Brandon Waters. Rogers now hoping to break free and score before the half and give them a huge emotional advantage over the town. Easy's Providence most likely would be content to 
keep the score tied unless they can get the ball back quickly and, and try to score. You see the Townies defense led by Jay Oliver at the bottom of that pile. And also being helped out by number 73, Brian Martins. We can't say enough about this Townie defense. They've been great all year as the offense has been. Jay Oliver, just an emotional leader on the field, as well as extremely strong and quick for his size. Good run by Lockhart. Eventually brought down by Amro. I talked to Brian Amro about him playing both ways, and he said he likes it. That it, in fact, there's an advantage to him that he can't stand being on the sidelines, and he doesn't find that he's overly tired or overly banged up. Feels that playing defense helps him with his offensive game. And the statistics so far this season would bear him out on that. Rogers first down, short yardage good enough. The Viking first down. Next week, back at Pierce Stadium. So if you're watching this game during the week, don't forget this Friday night, be at Pierce, seven o'clock, get there early, get a good seat. The Townies juggernaut hopefully will continue. Jay Oliver with the tackle. Rogers moving the ball now nicely inside the Townies 40 yard line. Close to the 35. Bader back deep looking for a wider. It's complete. Out of bounds at the 32, 31. Flags on the play, however. Appears to be against Rogers. So both teams suffering a bit from penalties. That first down completion will come back. Second down, about 11. Brandon Waters with the nice come from behind tackle. Waters caught Tets off from behind and tripped him up. And every time Rogers seems to mount an attack or get close to punching one in, the Townies defense comes up big and Rogers will call a timeout. Assistant coach, Jay Montero out with the team as you look at the other coaches in the sideline and referee Ray Brown. Again, through the pass, the bomb to the end zone. And no, a flag on the play. That should not be a penalty against East Providence. It's most likely an interference call against Rogers. We were screened out both by a telephone pole on the field and a fan who got in front of our camera. But wait a minute. Now the officials may indicate this is against East Providence. That's a terrible call if that's the case. You see the county coaches Incredulous, John Stringfellow way down on the field. The Townie defender got behind the Rogers intended receiver and was going up for the ball. And if any contact was made, it was by the Rogers player 
I'm standing near some Rogers spotters near the booth and they thought it was a penalty against Rogers. County coaches, rightly so, are very, very upset as another penalty has helped out the Vikings and another pass and this one is dropped. That one should have been caught. Now another flag on the field. Against the Vikings to the calls from the fans in the crowd of makeup calls. And now the, ref the official is forced to come over to address this with head coach Sandy Gorham. I have to agree with the county coaches on this. You just can't let a horrible call like that go by without defending your kids on the field. I'm in an area where other coaches are here scouting and Rogers officials and they're all in agreement. That was not a good call at all. Unfortunately, I don't think you got to see it all that well as a fan jumped in front of us and the field here has these telephone poles right on the field for lights. The Vikings, again, even though they've been pushed back now and it's another incomplete pass. County swarming defense, covering all defenders very well. So on that play, what basically happened was the county defender, the cornerback, got beyond his man and was going for the ball. And as they both went up for the ball, a Rogers player pretty much Went right up the backside of the county. As most observers here have said, it probably should have been a no call, but if they were going to call anything, it should have been a, a Viking interference call. But that's history. You're not going to change the officials. And there's another flag. As there has been more laundry tossed on this field tonight than we've seen in a long time. And again against Rogers. And again the crowd yelling, make up call, make up calls. So the Vikes have been pushed all the way back, close to midfield. If not right at midfield, after being close to the county goal line. And Rogers is just gonna pack it in and take the tie into the half. So that's gonna do it. We are tied at 12 in a very strange first half here at Topa Field in Newport. Coach John Stringfell is gonna go out and speak with Ray Brown, the official in the black hat there on the right, his back to us is the guy who made the call and he doesn't seem to want John Stringfell to be there, but Ray Brown doesn't mind talking to him. Everybody shaking their heads. String fellow with the clap, and he looks kind of uh, atoned there. Happy at what they had to say to him. We'll have to talk to him about that later and see what that was all about. Well, that's the end of the first half. East Providence Rogers tied at 12. Championship Division, Rhode Island, Interscholastic League football. Stay tuned for the halftime show. Of course, featuring the very, very best band in all of Rhode Island, the East Providence High School Marching Band, back on the road with some donations to fund the buses. Enjoy.
What a great job, as always, by the Townie Marching Band. Many of the fans in the stands who were standing and applauding were fans from Rogers High School in Newport, appreciating the great, great halftime show that East Providence High School Band puts together. It's really a, a college-like halftime show, a great atmosphere. If you haven't seen it live in person, it sounds and looks so much better. We can't show you the whole thing with one camera. You really need to come to Pierce Stadium and see for yourself. This Friday, be there, 7 o'clock, Pierce Field, another Class A clash with Coventry. As we're at halftime, Townies Rogers tied at 12. As you watch the Townie cheerleaders, I want to say that we did hear from Coach John Stringfellow, and he said that the officials, at least uh, one of them, wouldn't discuss that specific play, but spoke about it generically and, and said that, and pretty much said that the call was a wrong call, is what it basically came down to. Uh, without addressing that specific play, John asked a hypothetical question. The hypothetical answer was what Stringfellow thought it should be. So the referees uh, really not on top of their game tonight. But then again, neither have been the townies. It's been a very flat first half. Coach Sandy Gorham at halftime telling his team that he's very unhappy that he hasn't seen a half of football this bad in a long time and Brian Amell and others leading the Townies and getting them psyched to come out in the second half. So we'll, we'll have to see what East Providence does. The key game is Providence. Uh, in fact, nobody in this division can really afford a loss. We've been watching the Townie cheerleaders and now the Rogers cheerleaders are out there as we get set for second half action from Topa Field. Well, you know that when the officials are this much of a focus in any football game, that uh, something's wrong because when you don't see or hear much from them, then you know they're doing a good job. But the crowd here animatedly discussing these calls, uh, many, many uh, disagreeing. Of course, it uh, doesn't count what they think, doesn't count what I think. What counts is what the officials say and they've been throwing the flag left and right tonight on the field and in particular that one very bad pass interference call but thanks to the townie defense hasn't really hurt them all that badly as rogers has squandered a lot of opportunities as he's providence taking the field at halftime they were doing their best to get fired up. I have to really commend Coach Gorm, Stringfellow, Montero, Ciccarella, Vito, everybody who's helping out here. This is a well-coached team. Townie coaches uh, don't really panic. They'll yell and they'll scream like all football coaches do. I think all coaches do that from Pop Warner through the pros. But they do it at the right time, and Coach Gorham, in our many conversations during the week, will say, you know, I, we've got to remember they're just kids. And he gets as intense as anybody. Sometimes you may not think so. But if you saw that Portsmouth game, you saw an intense... Sandy Gorham, especially at the end of the game, he saw an excited Gorham. And Smith, Amaral, Martins are in for Toma. County captains, I'm sorry, I said Martins, I mean Carlos Rosa, in the 66. Sorry about that, Carlos. Right there, number 12, Brian Amaral. He's the guy that's going to have to get this turned around if the Townies are going to pull this game out. Can't emphasize enough the importance of uh, that young man to this team. Every quarterback is important to his team, but in particular, Amro is a leader. 
is Ray Smith and Ronnie Thomas are set to receive the kickoff. Emma wants to play so much, uh, he'd like to be back there receiving the kickoff too if they let him. Kick goes right to Ronnie Thomas who takes it straight up the field. Put down beyond the 25 yard line where the Townies will take over a first and 10. Ronnie Thomas, number 40. The way this game started, I thought we were going to have a route in the Townie opening kickoff. Thomas jumped on the ball on the Rogers four yard line. And Benny's Providence scored. But not much since then as we're tied at 12. Opening seconds of the second half. The wishbone attack. Straight ahead is Lee Rankin. Here's Andre Nimhard is done not only for the day, but maybe for the next couple or few weeks, possible fractured hand that hurt early in the first half. And he's a key player for these Townies. Again, Townies in the wishbone. Amber, the keeper. Brian Amber's gonna break free. Amber down across the 30 to the 25 yard line. And as he has done so often this year, Brian Amrill getting it done himself with some good blocking. Amrill has ignited his teammates on the sideline and the Townie fans here in the crowd. Ball at about the 25. First and 10, a long rush by Amel for the county first down. Rankin, busting through across the 10, down to the nine yard line. Make it closer to the six, Lee Rankin almost breaking it. Townies have an arsenal of offensive weapons in that backfield. Thomas still not 100% healthy. Neither is Tuthill. But plenty of guys to step in. Ronnie Thomas hanging on. Put the ball now at maybe the six. It was probably at the nine before. Again, difficult for me from my vantage point to see the downs markers and the lines hit this field and not like Pierce, almost impossible to see if they even have any. Smith, Thomas, Rankin, the backs. It's Rankin, maybe a yard or two. Weibel on the tackle for the Vikes. Third and about four for his Providence, and we have a timeout for an injury. You notice many times the town and coaches are close together on the sideline, always talking, always conversing. Always instructing, teaching. There's Jay Montero. We wait to see and hope that the Rogers player is okay. And he's up and okay. Gets a round of applause. County players as well as the fans and his Providence. Now from the Rogers four yard line. Lincoln, Smith, Rankin in the backfield. 
Amaro, the keeper, he's going to head for the end zone. He's in, touchdown, Brian Amaro. About a six yard scamper for the senior quarterback. The townies jump back on top. From inside that 10 yard line, Emerald is almost unstoppable in these short runs. And we've seen him break some long ones. He has very deceptive speed. And we know about his strength and his skills. Townies again, go for the two point conversion. Emerald the keeper, he's in. Brian Emerald just butted heads with the Rogers defender and kept on plowing ahead and he picks up the two point conversion for EP. East Providence breaks out on top, 20 to 12. As East Providence gets a little bit of breathing room, Coach Gorham exchanging a handshake with his quarterback. The crowd here seemed a little more at ease. And once again, the Townies will have Justin Rocher to kick off. Rocher, line drives it on the ground, gets by one person, picked up. Dennis Calhoun with the ball for the Vikes. He's done a lot of the work for the Viking offensive attack tonight. And Rodgers with pretty decent field position at about their own 35. They'll try to come back. Make it about the 38 yard line. Craig Fader has done a good job. That quarterback tonight, Kyle Price in there first along with Steve Evans. Second down play. Ball is loose. Looks like it's recovered by the Townies. Christian Andre. And talk about a turnaround. It's Andre, number three, for the Townies, recovering that fumble. It's Providence back on offense. First and 10. Number three, Andre with the big fumble recovery. Ball inside Rogers territory. Amber the keeper. Brian Amber across the 35, the 30, the 20. Brian Amber down inside the 20, maybe the 18 yard line. What a run by Amaro. So Amaro has been the spark plug the townies have needed this second half. And Rogers wants to stop this right away and they call a timeout and talk about it. John Stringfellow, Townie's assistant coach. There's Sandy Gorham, the head coach. Stringfellow calls most of the offensive plays this year as Coach Gorham running the overall show for the Townies. He said he feels very comfortable on the sideline this year. He lets John pretty much call the offense and Brian Amaro calls a lot of it right at the line himself. Let's see what he does right here. It's Lincoln heading towards the end zone. Mike Lincoln, close. 
First down, Lincoln and the Townies. Keith Brito, it's a nice blocking, number two, big towny sophomore. Along with towny heavyweight wrestler, number 76, Mike Grabari. You've seen him on TSN many times. He'll be carrying wrestling again this year. Straight ahead, Rankin, touchdown. Lou Rankin just bulls his way across the goal line. This Providence now 26, Rogers 12. This county starting to break this open. You could tell it was just a matter of time. This Providence, the better football team, but for a while there, Rogers giving them a scare, and I still think they're going to have a long, quiet bus ride back to East Providence as Coach Gorham. Not happy with the performance, at least in the first half of East Providence. Another flag on the field, this time against Rogers. Half the distance, I guess. Not much that Rogers can do to turn this around. They're overmatched by these townies. East Providence come out flat. Penalty flags, been a common sight tonight. And I guess you have to say pretty evenly distributed. But a couple of the bigger ones were against the townies. And Mike Lincoln with the two point conversion for East Providence. Townies lead 28-12. A little more emotion now being shown on the county sideline by coaches, players, and again you see the coaches group together. A close-knit group, stick together well, communicate. Stringfellow and Gorham. Always talk through the course of the game. Don't forget, big game, Friday night at Pierce Stadium. Be there, it's great, great entertainment. Where else can you go for a couple of bucks, or is it three bucks, I'm not sure. It's no more than three anyway. For adults, students or less. And they don't even charge you anymore for the band, they should. It's a college, like, halftime show. County swarming all over the Viking. One of the first townies in on the stop was Randy Starr, number 23. Many of these fans you're looking at now are East Providence fans. Happy. Finally, took the counties a while, but it's not over yet. Rogers can come back. Sort of a reverse handoff, but Rocha, along with Kyle Price on the tackle, Rocha in there low, grabbing the ankles, and Price finishing him off. And guess what? Not a penalty this time against the Vikings, holding. And I know that the football players and coaches certainly cannot look ahead, but that's a very dangerous thing to do, but uh, amateur announcers like me have the liberty to do that. We can take the fun and look ahead. 
And boy, what a big game that Hendrickson game is looming to be. Again, the county defense comes up big. Steve Evans and Jay Oliver. Who else? We assume that if East Providence doesn't make mistakes along the way, they certainly should beat Coventry, should beat Central High School. Should be in Socket and Cumberland, although all of those teams will present good games, as we have learned the hard way so many times. Trailer back to pass, under pressure, gets it away, but nobody in the area but Brian Amro. So putting all of that aside, assuming that East Providence does well with the teams that they're expected to do well against, what a game that Henrik and EP game will be. For those of you who forgot, East Providence upset Henrik in last year in what was one of the best high school football games that I ever saw. If East Providence plays the way they did last year, Henrik doesn't have a chance, and it was at Henrik. East Providence was all over them played every aspect of the game better than the Hawks. I think the Hawks, as you see, a fumble. Looks like the Vikings recovered their own fumble. But I believe the Hawks had been undefeated for two or three years until this Providence beat them handily last year. And that's all Henrikin can do is think about revenge and they are gearing up for these townies. They're a much bigger team. They average some 240 pounds on the line. As you see the high snap, the good rush. But the kick away. Townie play is uh, precariously close to that ball and coaching staff not happy. Letting them know, get away from the football. That can bounce up and hit them. 